Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Last time, we entered the Silent Realm for the final time, here in Skyloft no less. Completing our final trial and opening the way to the Triforce. It was quite literally under our nose. This time. Need I say more than that? We're all done being tested. It's time for things to get real. Welcome to Sky Keep. In this beautiful, sparkling room put to this orchestral score. Man, I just, I love the intro to this place so much. I had to let you hear it there for a moment. They're kind enough to start us off with a chest, and contrary to what you would expect, a giant spider does not drop onto your face as soon as you try to go collect it. And they're even nice enough to give you the dungeon map from the very beginning. No excuse to not know where you're going now. Our dungeon is eight cubicles that don't fit together in any sort of rhyme or reason. And we have no apparent way forward. Master, I have information to report. I've detected three sources of sacred power within this building. This power clearly radiates from the Triforce. I've triangulated the three sources of power mar and marked them on your map as triangle. <laughs> I appreciate the pun, Fi. You're becoming more and more human day by day. <laughs> I've been noticing, don't you worry. But with no way to move forward, I... Guess we can play with a sliding puzzle or something of that nature. It's really all we can do. I think that a trail leading to one of these Triforce symbols is probably about the best thing that you could hope for. Master, I have new information for you. Analysis indicates that the shaking you felt just now was caused by a change in the building structure. I think you get what's going on here. <laughs> now that the building structure has been altered, it appears you can enter the adjacent room. I propose you use this control panel to move through the structure and collect the components of the Triforce. This mechanic completely blew me away. I've said before that I find the dungeons here to be of roughly the same quality as Majora's Mask, which I consider a very high compliment. Every time you see one of these X's is one of those control panels. So really, just find your way to a room that has one of those X's every time you gotta move it, and you can move around any rooms, except rooms cannot pass through one another, and you can't move the one that you're currently in. It requires a lot of forethought, and I've been surprised to hear that there's some people out there that aren't fond of this place. I've known people that more or less had to guess their way through it because they're not really good at puzzles, but no, I really enjoyed it. I did. Before we get started, I've shifted around my inventory a little bit. I thought it would be nice to have our large quiver, our large bomb bag, and our large seed satchel. I don't really think I need them, but I decided to bring them. Got out a bottled fairy, and I figured I'd get out our glittering spores just so we could have a little bit of extra fun whenever the time called for. This place is a bit reminiscent of Farron Woods. I wouldn't call it a full-on revisit. Thankfully, I would not like to think about what another revisit to that place would be like. And, yeah. I can't say that I myself have never gotten stuck in this place. This right here was the puzzle that I got stuck on the longest, and you might be wondering how that was. I kept trying to cut this rope with my beetle and not understanding why it wouldn't work. <laughs> it was very silly of me, not getting that I just had to... That I just had to do that, and then the rope would be free. I don't know, it obeys impossible physics, and the rope apparently acts like it's made out of wood, but I had trouble with it. Line ourselves up for the swing, grab onto that, swing across. Hey buddy, haven't seen one of your kind in a while. I'm just gonna deal with you the old fashioned way. Don't even need to use a finisher on you anymore. Shows just how far we've come and without a, well, without a required boss rush at least, but the boss rush wasn't really so much to show how far we'd come. It did give us increased damage. We couldn't use new items in old bosses though. I'd like to shoot you. I don't think I've shot, yeah, okay. It does take care of you. Furnaxes are very fragile. So deal with them with the rope. Gonna pull out our claw shots, and all of our items are just coming together into a luscious pudding blend. Don't think too much about how pudding is luscious. But it's all coming together. We can use our items all in tandem with one another in interesting ways. 
Speaking of which, Beetle, you're up. Sideswipe. I said, let's just sideswipe that, catch it in our mouth in a really funny way. Well, we're certainly doing something in a funny way. Give me my bomb. Got you. And hi, speaking of seeing old foes, I don't like your face. That is why I blew it up. And I think I actually blew them all up because I heard multiple things drop right there. Uh, ooh, barely made it. Hop on over. And now it's the Gust Bellows' turn. Up to this point, we've used everything once that is not the slingshot, the magma mitts, the harp, or the bug net. I don't think we're missing any of them, and it's only the second room. So again, gotta praise it on using every item in a meaningful way long after they've been introduced and not just forgetting about them after the first dungeon. Uh, now we've used every item that is not the slingshot, the magma mitts, or the harp. Spoke a little bit too soon. I'll take you guys. <laughs> Not like it even really matters at this point, but why would I pass them up? And hey, got my 69 blessed butterflies after all. Eh, I'll ruin it and make it 70. Just because I know some of you are more mature than me and probably don't like me making that a goal. And actually, I don't need collectibles anymore. It's just sunk in that we've made our last potion, we've crafted our last thing, and I don't need potential extra cash for anything now. But it won't stop me from drawing a rupee because I don't need anything from this goddess wall. Oh. I guess I won't be a smart aleck today. I'll just do it straight. And I know you're thankful for that because it means I won't sing again. But no silver rupee. Yeah. Oh, I guess I'll pick it up with my net now. <laughs> Gotta make the net feel even more useful in this room. This is its prime time to shine. And now we can open the door to the first piece of the Triforce that we saw marked on our map. However, things aren't quite as they seem. First off, of course, the ancient cistern would be represented by this place. Master, look over that way. The design carved into the floor there is the mark of Furore. I detect the sacred power of the Triforce emanating from its vicinity. To reach the area where that mark is located, I propose you pass through the door in front of you. I wanted to show this room first to show that one of our prime goals is going to be finding a small key to open that d mouth door thing. I, I was trying to make it sound cool though, but I realized that mouth door just sounded really funny as I was saying it. Uh, anything in your eyes? It's usually something hidden in those, but I guess those peepers are just kind of drained of their money now. Can't go this way, this would be our way out, but unfortunately not so. So now that we know what our prime objective is, I want to head back. And show that we have a lever. Just about every room has some kind of shortcut allowing you to traverse through it very quickly after you have cleared it out once. You're going to want to find these and open them every time you see them so you can quickly get around backtracking to previous rooms, using previous rooms in ways that you haven't to get to these control panels. I'm gonna move it around that way. I might have been able to do that in the first place. I'm just gonna let you know right now that this dungeon is a little bit strange in its layout. You could have a completely different playthrough of this place than me. If you're playing along, you might want to experiment. You might notice a faster route that I could be taking. And really, already, it's very clear that I'm not taking the fastest, most efficient route just because I wanted to establish that thing with the key right at the beginning to kind of give you an idea of what our goal was. But that's just what I find so fascinating about Skykeep is that you're basically building the dungeon for you to play through. It's an interesting experience not gotten from any other dungeon in the series. And of course, I'm also happy about the Linear Mining Facilities mechanics coming back. Why wouldn't I be? It's a lot like the rest of this game where it is more replayable than you think it is. And not really for the reasons that you would expect, where it is more about the enemies, the boss encounters. Every time that you fight an enemy, it can be a radically different experience just because of how the combat works. It's one of my biggest praises here, and it still remains true. The other dungeons have been fairly linear by design, but not this one. I think this is a dungeon that definitely feels like a good finale to things, and just kind of maybe been holding out for something really creative and open-ended like this, then yeah, you're kind of getting your wish in the end. At least I think you are. Uh, 
Come on! Stop being so close and shooting. That is so cheap. How am I supposed to outdo your DPS if you're fighting like that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Skyward Strike you, Horizontal Slice you. But come on. That's not coming back, is it? I guess it can. Cheating by time travel much? Come on! Thank you. And look at that. Look at that. Drops one red rupee. The only time that we ever fight one of these guys, not over a bottomless pit. And it drops just a measly little red rupee. If you didn't think that they knew exactly what they were doing before this point by always placing them over bottomless pits and making them explode into a ton of rupees that you can't pick up, well now you definitely do know that they knew exactly what they were doing. So those of you giving them the benefit of the doubt saying like, oh come on, I don't think they were trying to be that mean, and that looks really cool how the conveyor belt is like moving into a stationary part of it through time travel. But <laughs> why were they such jerks with this enemy? It means somebody specifically went out of their way to program this one to not drop a bunch of rupees. You should have given me just one of those centrobes that was not over a bottomless pit, so I could finally have some closure on all those rupees that I was never able to pick up. I, I would have liked it at least. I would have. Gonna get out my Gust Bellows. Once again, you're seeing some use, and you can use the Z button to strafe. I recommend doing that, even if you can't lock on to that from this far away. Still generally the way that I would suggest doing it. Step on the switch. We'll walk with it. Get it across to the other side. We'll uncover that switch. Our bow is cool looking. Just taking a moment to appreciate it right here. Just how it's got like those talons on it and like those uh, looks like beaks almost. It's very bird like in its design. Maybe it's like to represent Hawkeyes or something like that. It just it looks really cool. Pull you over this way. We could have used that lever to finish pulling it over the rest of the way though, but I kind of felt like just making the journey myself and not letting technology do it for me. I've done enough of that and that's going to be my character development arc this time around is not letting technology do everything for me, just most things up until I get to this point. Uh, whoa! Hey there! I didn't notice you and I am glad that I didn't keep it that way. I'll grab you and I will be ready for you to come back to life. Position ourselves, be ready to shoot any second. Should you need to move it back, that's what that lever in the middle is for, just use your whip on that. There you go. Finally actually had a meaningful time of doing that. So rare that I actually get a real legit chance to do that. Using the bow to insta-kill the BMOS, because usually it's a terrible idea. Whoop, throw that over there. Just feels good to throw switches. That's two. That's a three. That's a four. Almost ran out of air. And that's almost a five. Kind of possibly almost not quite. Really not always untrue. Now it's untrue. There we go. And that gives us access to our second terminal. We could go onward to that room, but we already know that that doesn't serve any good use, so I guess I do stand by the way that I did things. Um, let's see. How do I want to do this? Uh, I gotta st I'm trying to be very careful and think about this uh, just for a moment before I go off trying to do it. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll do this. That's a very long, continuous pathway, and even though it might not lead to any Traverse pieces, it might lead to other things that we need. You never know. We do have that key that we gotta look out for, and there is a chest in that middle room, so I think that sounds like a pretty nice, fine place to start. Our door forward would be here. This is a call button, really, just for the, uh, lift, but we do have our shortcut to go through this room with the, uh, control panel being right there. So we've opened up this room about as much as we possibly can. That doesn't have the time shift orb on it. <laughs> Here I thought I was being all cool by using that thing, but nope. All right, I will. 
I I I I. <laughs> Always remember to put the time shift orb right back where you found it. You don't want to unintentionally change history, do you? You see, if you leave that time shift stone in a place that it's not supposed to be, you run the risk of one of the worker robots in the mines noticing that it's not where it's supposed to be, so he takes time out of his day to go put it back where it's supposed to be, causing him to be two minutes later getting home from work than he would have been otherwise, causing him to get hit by a truck that he wouldn't have gotten hit by, meaning that he will never reproduce, his entire family that would have existed in the future never comes to be, and whoop, you've just changed the results of the next presidential election. Yeah, okay, I really like stories like that when I was a kid. Now, uh, fire, or not fire sanctuary, Earth Temple. Always, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Great getting to see these themes again. Like the architecture of it, the general colors. We have that cool lighting. You know what? In the spirit of the Earth Temple and what I was talking about all that time ago, it'd be a crime if I didn't call you out. You know what? Yeah, let's see what your advice is. We don't usually check it. Uh, uh, uh are you going to pop out? Thank you, yes, we get to see the cool lighting reflecting up Fi's body. And analysis indicates that effective map use will be critical when navigating through Sky Key. It's also important to check your map with plus while you are operating the control panel that moves the rooms. What she is saying is actually true. I hadn't mentioned that up to this point. There are multiple ways to enter certain rooms, and you might notice that some of these pathways next to the doorways are sectioned off from each other. So the way that you enter a room is also something important to keep in mind when deciding how you're gonna be shifting things around. Climb through. We got a bomb flower, which I remember this being a little bit of a pain. Whoa. Did I make it? Not even close. Trying that again? Yeah, that'll definitely do it. Uh, almost caused a horrible disaster right there. Uh, something that I've been wanting to talk about that- Whoa! Hey there, buddy! You didn't drop anything for me. Cool. And I guess I- Okay, well, no. Let's pause for a moment. Stopping myself here with a bit of post-commentary because I somehow forgot that I just showed off my adventure pouch a few minutes ago and felt like I hadn't done it. Went and got a bottled fairy, and I brought along the glittering spores. If you thought I forgot, don't worry. I didn't. I thought we could maybe have a little bit of fun through this final dungeon, just kind of using them up on things as I saw fit. I thought that would be a fun time. But we now have the switch that we can throw, opening the way forward from before. Uh, um, that was strange. Link wasn't moving there for a second. I thought maybe it crashed, like a soft lock. Ah, oh, hey, the return of the monster that's putting his bib on. Three eyes is still not enough to see the spills coming. You must make sure that you are clean while eating, yes. The way forward has a Dark Lizalfos. Haven't seen you in a while, buddy. Boom! Slam! Bam! Gorgeous. Instantly killed. Hey, Lizard Tail. Sure, it's a little gross, but you never know when you might need one. <laughs> the old saying for essential everyday items such as Lizard Tails. <laughs> I would say that Link is sounding like a hoarder again if you actually read all those messages, especially if they come in quick succession and you don't just mash A through them like a lot of people do, but now we know he's a hoarder. We're never using those items again. Is that, is that actually a monster's mouth? Yes, it is. He doesn't have a bottom jaw. I'm sorry. That looks really funny if you imagine this as being his bottom jaw or like his tongue or something. No, that, that's his tongue right there. Seek the gemstones that sleep behind each statue. If you strike them in order of lowest to highest, the door will open. Second, we got this right here. Gonna go bowling. Land that right in where it should be. And like I said, even though I could use our beetle to go over and hit that, I think we're gonna walk over to it ourselves said lowest to highest, I think is what it was. I hope I didn't read that wrong. I really, really hope I'm not remembering that wrong within five seconds. If I am, it's no big deal. Then we'll just use our beetle to do it because I've already made the journey once. I'll use it for fast traveling. Gonna chop down a record number of trees. I guess if this whole hero thing doesn't work out, I could always become a lumberjack. That would be a good one. Certainly be effective at it. Oh. 
And now... In that goes. Uh, before I hit another switch, I have to know if I was correct. From lowest to highest, good. I could believe highest to lowest being correct as well. There goes number two. And fine, I'll be lazy if I have to. Twisted my arm and forced me into being lazy with hitting this last switch. I'll let it slide this time. And just kind of as we're going through here, I hope the Beatle makes a comeback someday. I truly do. Even if it's only like in some little spin-off portable title or something like that. I'd love to see the Beatle make a comeback. It's such a clever item. And I mentioned how it had its origins as being a boomerang of sorts originally, but they decided to change it to being its own item because it didn't really act like a boomerang anymore. I'm glad that it became its own thing because it's just, it's so clever for it. Just the hook beetle. It's something that a boomerang could kind of do before, but not to this extent and allows so much potential. And though the beetle might not have made a comeback, some other stuff has. You can see a lot of the gameplay elements actually from Breath of the Wild kind of taking shape here. We have our stamina gauge, of course. We have lots of other things. We have materials. We have shield durability. It's kind of interesting to see that because Skyward Sword, as I've said before, it was originally planned to be a bit more like Breath of the Wild in its development. I screwed up. I screwed up. I screwed up. I was supposed to break that first crap. Well, no one doing it now. <laughs> the gate's already blocking it, but. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to see that. Even if you're not the biggest fan of Skyward Sword, I hope I've at least been able to show you how, you know, a lot of people like Breath of the Wild and a lot of the mechanics in it did take shape here. You see a lot of the seeds of it just kind of being sown. Um, like I said, this was originally planned to be a bit more open-ended than it wound up being, but because of the development issues, they had to kind of make it a different way than it was originally planned. It's interesting to see those sorts of things and how I don't think Breath of the Wild could have been as great as it was had it not been for Skyward Sword just kind of doing a lot of the things that it did. I think it's very fascinating to see and maybe if you didn't give it a chance before, you can at least appreciate it for what it did. Here we got a very clever case where we're fighting two of these Moldorms. I think I'm just going to juggle back and forth alternating which one I'm hitting. Uh, nope, not quite. Come here, give me your pulsating buttocks once again. I love saying it like that, even though I know it's technically incorrect. I've been made fun of that so much in my life, though, but I just, I find it amusing, like, just the way that I always thought it was pronounced that I never want to change. It's kind of like Rayquaza in that way. <laughs> Sorry, Rayquaza, I just, they're Rayquaza, it's, I, I can't say it with a straight face, I really can't. Come, oh boy. Uh, come after me, come after me, bro! There you go, no, 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 <laughs> come on! <laughs> Take the bait, take the bait. By take the bait, I don't mean show me your butt. Come on, get over here. Not gonna be able to dash at me and run into a wall from there. Come on. Give me that. Turn around, every now and then I get a little bit lonely. And there that goes. May the other guy not notice me in my vulnerable time. Down. Going over. You didn't notice me. Hi! <laughs> I somehow did it. Boom, 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 boom. Open the way forward and the way... I'm holding up. Uh, Link, Link, I'm... Okay, that was weird. I was holding in the opposite direction of how he was actually moving. The, the underground scuttling just kind of seems a little bit broken here today. And this brings us to another one of these control panels, as well as our switch to get the shortcut through this room.
Let me see. I don't want to rearrange things just yet. I'd like to at least see what's in the next room. That's kind of another thing, is if nothing else, make your first objective seeing every room at least once, just so you have the map layout filled in, you know what to expect, you know how the rooms connect to each other, and hey, what do you know? Darn good thing I didn't look a gift horse in the mouth. This is actually its own separate entity. This is LD003D Dreadfuse. This menacing robot guards Sky Keep. It is thought to be of similar model to the robot that stole Skipper's ship in Lanayru Sansi. As before, when fighting in a narrow space like this, it is more effective to use thrust attacks with your sword than to try to swing your sword wildly. We'll do just that. Boom, 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 boom. Ah, here we go. He's gonna attack us anytime now. Oh. Just repeatedly stabbing is working a lot better than I thought it would. Usually I mess up and I swing at least once, but I got my form on pretty on today. Got you through phase one without even having to guard or anything. Oh, boom. nope, not quite. At least you have the Hylian shield. If you mess up, just bash your shield wildly. Even if you do mess up, there's no penalty for it. Whoa. I know that doesn't really push you back a whole lot, but I thought it was nice. Oh, nope, oh, wow. All right, we gotta stop messing around here. It was working there for a little while. Oh. God, he's even faking us out. That's, wow, okay. Oh. I'm always a second too late. I just realized he has the clown pants that the Technoblins have. I, I like your taste in fashion, having clown pants together with a crown. Gotta make sure that you don't slash in the direction that he's guarding with a sword, otherwise you will most definitely get hurt. Boom, get you again, and do the little bit pushback. No. No, come on. There you go. Just gotta do it a lot quicker than I was doing it. Boom. There goes your Electro Sword. All you got left is your hook. Or as you know it, your hand. It's a very unfortunate existence for you. And he had electricity on his thing the whole time and chose not to use it. Come on. Speaking of Breath of the Wild mechanics making their debut here, thank goodness electricity doesn't make you drop your weapon or your shield. Otherwise, I would have been really boned there. <laughs> wow, that went a little bit rougher than I thought it would. But hey, dread views. More like Dead fuse. And there is our treasure chest we've been working so hard to get. Yep. We got a small key. That's a mid boss down. A couple of mid bosses down if you want to count the Moldorms. And we got our key, thus completing our first objective. Next time on The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. We're gonna go deeper into Skykeep with this key, seeing just what it might unlock. See you guys then. No! I don't like your face. Dun 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 I did not mean to call you. Dun 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 I need my claw shots, that's the whip. There we go.